Python is the most widely used programming language today. When it comes to solving data science tasks and challenges, Python never ceases to surprise its audience. Most data scientists out there are already leveraging the power of Python every day. Hi, I'm Apeksha from Simply Learn, and well, after some thought and a bit more research, I was finally able to narrow down my choice of top Python libraries for data science. What are they? Let's find out. So let's talk about this amazing library, TensorFlow, which is also one of my favorites. So TensorFlow is a library for high performance numerical computations with around 35,000 GitHub commits and a vibrant community of around 1500 contributors and it's used across various scientific domains. It's basically a framework where we can define and run computations which involves tensors and tensors we can say are partially defined computational objects again where they will eventually produce a value. That was about TensorFlow. Let's talk about the features of TensorFlow. So TensorFlow is majorly used in deep learning models and neural networks where we have other libraries like Torch and Theano also. But TensorFlow has hands down better computational graphical visualizations when compared to them. Also, TensorFlow reduces the error largely by 50 to 60 percent in neural machine translations. It's highly parallel in a way where it can train multiple neural networks and multiple GPUs for highly efficient and scalable models. This parallel computing feature of TensorFlow is also called pipelining. Also, TensorFlow has the advantage of seamless performance. As it's backed by Google, it has quicker updates, frequent new releases with the latest of features. Now, let's look at some applications. TensorFlow is extensively used in speech and image recognition, text-based applications, time series analysis and forecasting, and various other applications involving video detection. So the favorite thing about TensorFlow is that it's already popular among the machine learning community and most are open to trying it and some of us are already using it. Now, let's look at an example of a TensorFlow model. In this example, we will not dive deep into the explanation of the model as it is beyond the scope of this video. So here we're using Amnes dataset which consists of images of handwritten digits. Handwritten digits can be easily recognized by building a simple TensorFlow model. Let's see how. When we visualize our data using matplotlib library, the inputs will look something like this. Then we create our TensorFlow model. To create a basic TensorFlow model, we need to initialize the variables and start a session. Then after training the model, we can validate the data and then predict the accuracy. This model has predicted 92% accuracy. Let's see, which is pretty well for this model. So that's all for TensorFlow. If you need to understand this tutorial in detail, then you can go ahead and watch our deep learning tutorial from Simply Learn as shown in the right corner. Interesting, right? Let's move on to the next library. Now let's talk about a common yet a very powerful Python library called NumPy. NumPy is a fundamental package for numerical computation in Python. It stands for numerical Python as the name suggests. It has around 18,000 commits on GitHub with an active community of 700 contributors. It's a general purpose array processing package in a way that it provides high performance multi-dimensional objects called arrays and tools for working with them. Also NumPy addresses the slowness problem partly by providing these multi-dimensional arrays that we talked about and then functions and operators that operate efficiently on these arrays. Interesting, right? Now let's talk about the features of NumPy. It's very easy to work with large arrays and matrices using NumPy. NumPy fully supports object-oriented approach. For example, coming back to ND array once again, it's a class possessing numerous methods and attributes. ND array provides for larger and repeated computations. NumPy offers vectorization. It's more faster and compact than traditional methods. I always wanted to get rid of loops and vectorization of NumPy clearly helps me with that. Now let's talk about the applications of NumPy. NumPy along with Pandas is extensively used in data analysis, which forms the basis of data science. It helps in creating the powerful n-dimensional array. Whenever we talk about NumPy, the mention of the array, we cannot do it without the mention of the powerful n-dimensional array. Also, NumPy is extensively used in machine learning when we are creating machine learning models, as in where it forms the base of other libraries like SciPy, Scikit-learn, etc. When you start creating the machine learning models in data science, you will realize that all the models will have their base as NumPy or Pandas. Also, 
when numpy is used with scipy and matplotlib it can be used as a replacement of matlab now let's look at a simple example of an array in numpy as you can see here there are multiple array manipulation routines like there are basic examples where you can copy the values from one array to another we can give a new shape to an array from maybe one dimensional to we can make it as a two dimensional array we can return a copy of the array collapsed into one dimension now let's look at an example where this is a jupyter a notebook and uh, we will just create a basic array and uh, for detailed explanation you can watch our other videos which targets on these explanations of each libraries so first of all whenever we are using any library in python we have to import it so now this np is the alias which we will be using let's create a simple array let's look what is the type of this array So this is an ND array type of array. Also, let's look what's the shape of this array. So this is a shape of the array. Now here we saw that we can expand the shape of the array. So this is where you can change the shape of the array using all those functions. Now let's create an array using arrange functions. If I give arrange 12, it will give me a 1D array of 12 numbers like this. Now we can reshape this array. to 3 comma 4 or we can write it here itself so this is how arrange function and the reshape function works for numpy now let's discuss the next library which is scipy so this is another free and open source python library extensively used in data science for high level computations so this library as the name suggests stands for scientific python and it has around 19000 commits on github with an active community of 600 contributors it is extensively used for scientific and technical computations also as it extends numpy it provides many user friendly and efficient routines for scientific calculations now let's discuss about some features of scipy so scipy has this collection of algorithms and functions which is built on the numpy extension of python secondly it has various high level commands for data manipulation and visualization also the nd image function of scipy is very useful in multi-dimensional image processing and it includes built-in functions for solving differential equations linear algebra and many more so that was about the features of scipy now let's discuss its applications so scipy is used in multi-dimensional image operations it has functions to read images from disk into numpy arrays to write arrays to disk as images resize images etc solving differential equations fourier transforms then optimization algorithms linear algebra etc let's look at a simple example to learn what kind of functions are there in scipy here i'm importing the constants package of scipy library so in this package it has all the constants so here I am just mentioning C or H or any and this library already knows what it has to fetch like speed of light, Planck's constant etc. So this can be used in further calculations. Data analysis is an integral part of data science. Data scientists spend most of the day in data munching and then cleaning the data also. Hence mention of pandas is a must in data science life cycle. Yes, pandas is the most popular and widely used python library for data science along with numpy and matplotlib. The name itself stands for python data analysis with around 17,000 commits on github and an active community of 1200 contributors. It is heavily used for data analysis and cleaning as it provides fast, flexible data structures like data frames, series, which are designed to work with structured data very easily and intuitively. Now let's talk about some features of pandas. So pandas offers this eloquent syntax and rich functionalities. Like there are various methods in pandas like drop na, fill na, which gives you the freedom to deal with missing data. Also, pandas provides a powerful apply function, which lets you create your own function and run it across a series of data. Now forget about writing those for loops while using pandas. Also, this library's high-level abstraction over low-level numpy, which is written in pure C. 
C. Then it also contains these high level data structures and manipulation tools which makes it very easy to work with pandas like their data structures and series. Now let's discuss the applications of pandas. So pandas is extensively used in general data wrangling and data cleaning. Then pandas also finds its usage in ETL jobs for data transformation and data storage as it has excellent support for loading CSV files into its data frame format. Then pandas is used in a variety of academic and commercial domains including statistics, finance, neuro science, economics, web analytics, etc. Then pandas is also very useful in time series specific functionality like date range generation, moving window linear regression, date shifting, etc. Now let's look at a very simple example of how to create a data frame. So data frame is a very useful data structure in pandas and it has very powerful functionalities. So here I'm only enlisting important libraries in data science. You can explore more of our videos to learn about these libraries in detail. So let's just go ahead and create a data frame. I'm using Jupyter Notebook again and in this before using pandas here I'm importing the pandas library. Let me go and run this. So in data frame, we can import a file, a CSV file, Excel files. There are many functions doing these things. And uh, we can also create our own data and put it into data frame. So here I am taking random data and putting in a data frame. Also, I'm creating an index and then also giving the column names. So PD is the alias we've given for pandas, random data of six by four index, which is taking a range of six numbers and column name I'm giving as ABCD. Now let's go ahead and look at it. So here it has created a data frame with my column names of ABCD, my list as six numbers, zero to five and a random data of six by four. So data frame is just another table with rows and columns where you can do various functions over it. Also, I can go ahead and describe this data frame to see. So it's giving me all these functionalities where count and mean and standard deviation, etc. Okay, so that was about pandas. Now let's talk about next library and the last one. So matplotlib for me is the most fun library out of all of them. Why? Because it has such powerful yet beautiful visualizations. We'll see in the coming slides. Plot and matplotlib suggest that it's a plotting library for Python. It has around 26,000 commits on GitHub and a very vibrant community of 700 contributors. And because of such graphs and plots that it produces, it's majorly used for data visualization. And also because it provides an object-oriented API, which can be used to embed those plots into our applications. Let's talk about the features of matplotlib. The PyPlot module of matplotlib provides MATLAB-like interface. So matplotlib is designed to be as usable as MATLAB with an advantage of being free and open source. Also, it supports dozens of backends and output types, which means you can use it regardless of which operating system you're using or which output format you wish. Pandas itself can be used as wrappers around matplotlib's API so as to drive matplotlib via cleaner and more modern APIs. Also, when you start using this library, you will realize that it has a very little memory consumption and a very good runtime behavior. Now let's talk about the applications of matplotlib. It's important to discover the unknown relationship between the variables in your data set. So this library helps to visualize the correlation analysis of variables. Also in machine learning, we can visualize 95% confidence interval of the model just to communicate how well our model fits the data. Then matplotlib finds its application in outlier detection using scatterplot, etc. And to visualize the distribution of data to gain instant insights. Now let's make a very simple plot to get a basic idea. I've already imported the libraries here. So this function matplotlib inline will help you show the plots in the Jupyter notebook. This is also called a magic function. I won't be able to display my plots in the Jupyter notebook if I don't use this function. I am using this function in uh, NumPy to fix random state for reproducibility. Now I'll take uh, my n as 30 and will assign random values to my variables. So this function is generating 30 random numbers. Here I'm trying to create a scatter plot. So I want to decide the area. Let's put this. So it's just multiplying 30 with random numbers to the power 2 so that we get the area of the plot which we will see in just a minute. So using the scatter function and the alias of matplotlib as plt, I've created this. If I don't use this, then I have very small circles as my scatter plot. It's colorful, it's nice. So that's one very easy plot. 
I suggest that you explore more of matplotlib and I'm sure you will enjoy it. Let's create a histogram. So I'm using my the style as ggplot and assigning some values to these variables, any random values. Now we are assigning bars and colors and alignment to the plot. And here we get the graph. So we can create different type of visualizations and plots and then work upon them using matplotlib and it's just that simple. So this was about the top python libraries for data science according to me. It still may not cover some other great useful libraries that deserve to be looked at. So share your favorites in the comment section below as well as any interesting things about the libraries that we mentioned. That's all from my side. Thank you and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.